So this video is going to show you how to create additional calculated columns using Power Query, but do it with a twist. Here's what I mean. I've got data with sales rep names, cost, and sales. But what I'd like to calculate, and I'm going to do this with Power Query, is I'd like to calculate the profit, the discount, the subtotal, the tax, and the total. So I've got five columns of calculations. Now, normally this would take five steps to perform in Power Query, but I want to show you how to do this in one step. Now, even though we're going to create five calculations with a single step, there's really no limit to the number of calculations you could create with this single step. You could do 100 calculations if you want. So let's first go through this and do this the normal one step at a time way, just so we can see what the normal technique is. Then we'll see how we can optimize that and do those five calculations in a single step. At the end, I'm gonna take the already somewhat optimized query and optimize it even further with some cool M code tricks. So let's get right to it. Be sure to download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along with me while I do this, or you can just go straight to the finished file and look at all the steps in the documentation. Here we have a table that I've named data. So we'll go ahead and select that and go up to data from table range. Let's bring this into Power Query. Now that we're in Power Query, let's look at the steps that Power Query performed for us. We connected to the source file, which is that table named data. We promoted the first row to a header row and it set the data types. We'll now create the five needed calculations. So first off, profit. We'll select the sales column, hold down control, select cost, and we'll go up to add column, standard, and subtract. This creates a new column called subtraction. Now normally you would just go up here and double click and rename this from subtraction to profit, but that's going to add an extra step in our applied steps list. Now that rename column step, that's a step that doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, it's needed, but it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. And I don't like to have a separate dedicated step just for renaming a column. So I'm going to delete that step and go back to the step where I created the profit and just go into the M code and change the temporary name subtraction to profit. And that way we can just start with the correct name. Let's do the same thing for discount. The discount will be 10% of the sales. So we'll select sales and go up to add column, standard, multiply, and I'm going to multiply each sale by 10%. I'll go back into the M code, change the temporary name from multiplication to discount. Next, we'll calculate the subtotal, which is the sales minus the discount. So I'll select sales, hold down control, discount, and then go up to standard, subtract. Let's rename this to subtotal. Next will be the tax calculation, and we'll make this eight and three quarter percent of the subtotal. So subtotal selected, we'll go to standard, multiply, and we'll multiply that by 8.75%. Let's rename that in the M code to tax. And then lastly, for the total, this will be the subtotal plus the tax. So we'll select those two columns, go to standard and add. We'll rename that to total. And for all of these columns, except for the sales rep, I'd really rather have these be currency data types because that will maximize the memory efficiency. So I'll go back to cost, give that a click, scroll over, shift click on total. And then in one of those selected headings, right click, change type and currency. So we'll go up to home and send this back to Excel as a proper table. My fractional precision is a little inconsistent, so I'll go ahead and select these columns of numbers and give them something like a currency style. Now, none of that is particularly difficult, but let's go back to Power Query and look at that M code. Here we have nine steps in the applied steps list. And of those nine steps, the majority of them are just in the creation of the calculated columns. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could take all five of these and do them in a single step? Now, if you want to do some experimenting, but you're afraid you might mess up your original good query, let's open up the queries panel on the left and we'll right click this query and duplicate it. And so maybe we'll rename this to test. And this way we can practice without the fear of negative consequences. So I'm gonna to go to the step where we created our first calculation and I'm going to right click and delete everything from that point to the end of the query. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a record of calculations. In other words, we're going to create a column that stores all five calculations at once, and it will store them in a record object. So let's go up to Add Column and then Custom Column. Let's go ahead and rename this new column Calculations. In this notepad file are the five calculations we created in the first query. We've got Profit, Discount, Subtotal, Tax, and Total. This file is also available from the file download link in the video description. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these formulas and copy them, Control-C, go into our custom column dialog box and paste them. 
Now you can't just paste five completely different formulas into a single query step. This isn't going to create five columns. What we need to do is create these as a record. Now all records are contained in a set of square brackets. So here I've added an opening square brackets before profit and a closing square brackets after the total formula. So this is a record of formulas. The names of the formulas will be the column headings and the calculations will make up the row level data. We'll hit OK. And here we get a column of records. If we click to the right of one of those records, we can see the five calculations for that record. So we've got profit, discount, subtotal, tax, and total. Now you can't send records back to Excel. Excel doesn't know how to hold five pieces of information in a single cell. So we need to extract the five columns of calculations into actual columns of this table. So I'll go up to the top of the calculations column and click our extraction button. We're going to select every column in the record. We're not going to use column prefixing and hit OK. Now we've got the five extracted calculated columns. So what before took us five steps to create, we've now created in a single step. Now we did have to add a step to do the extraction, but we'll just think of that as optimization overhead. All of the extracted data has been classified with the any data type. Everything from cost all the way to total needs to be a currency data type in this example. So I'm gonna go back and click cost, scroll to the right, shift click total, and then in one of those highlighted column headings, right click, change type to currency. So now I have all of these set as their proper data types. Let's go up to home, close and load, and we'll do a close and load too because I wanna send this out as a proper table right next to the output of the original query. So we'll go as a table, but we'll use an existing worksheet. And I'm just gonna put it here, starting in column J. We'll close the queries panel, and I'll do the same type of presentation cleanup I did on the last one, setting the output data to currency data type and standardizing the column widths. So each of these tables is producing the same thing. It's just that one of them does it in fewer steps. The query on the left did it in nine steps. The query on the right did it in six steps. But the real savings was that the one on the left that took five calculation steps the one on the right took only one calculation step. Now let's talk about beautifying the code. I'm gonna go back up to data, queries and connections, and let's go to the test query and right click edit. Looking in the formula bar, we can see the underlying M code as we walk through each of these steps. Now looking at the code one step at a time, that's fine, but let's go up to the advanced editor. Now we can see all of the M code at once. Now my issue with M code is, I don't think it's very attractive. I don't think any code is actually very attractive. So I like to run it through a beautification process. Let's highlight this code, copy it, control C, and then we'll open up our web browser and go to one of my favorite websites on the web, and that is the Power Query Formatter. PowerQueryFormatter.com will give us this starting page. Click anywhere in the animation, and you're likely to be presented with some sample M code. Whatever's in this code window, just click in the code, press control A on the keyboard to select all the code, and then press delete. Once the code window is cleared, we'll do a control V to paste our code in here, and then we'll go up and click this little arrow button that says format. That will beautify our code. We'll go up to the copy button and copy the code, switch back to the advanced editor in Power Query, and we'll take all of our code, delete it, and then paste the code from the powerqueryformatter.com website. Now, although I think this looks much better, there are some things I wish the Power Query formatter did that it doesn't, and that is I wish it put a blank line between each step. So I like to go in here and add blank lines between each step. I just think it makes it a little bit easier to see where things begin and end. We'll hit done. Everything works as it used to. It's just that now the code looks a little bit better. Let's close and load this back out, and we wanna make sure that everything's still working properly. Now let's talk about query optimization. I'm a big fan of having as short a query and as few steps as possible. So let's look at a couple tricks for doing this. Back up to data, we'll go to queries and connections, and we'll go to our test query, right click edit. Like before, I wanna make sure I don't accidentally destroy what I already have, so I'm going to take the test query, right click and duplicate it. So we'll do our experimenting on test number two. To view the full M code, let's go back and open the advanced editor. Scrolling down to the step where we expanded the columns, so right here, this is where we looked at the records and then extracted the five columns from those records. Now the five columns were profit, discount, subtotal, tax, and total. If you've ever wondered why sometimes these things are listed twice, 
It's because these are the columns that are in the record that are to be extracted, but these are the names that were to give the extracted columns. Now, my guess is most of the time, you're going to want the same names in the extracted version as you had in the unextracted version. But maybe the source material called it tax, but when you extract it, you want it to be called tax rate. Well, instead of extracting it as tax and adding another step to your query just to rename tax to tax rate, we could go into the second set of words and just type in what we want the extracted version to be called. And this will effectively perform the extraction and the rename at the same time. Now, since I don't want to rename any of these, I can highlight that second version of the column names and just delete that instruction. Now, don't forget to get rid of this comma because without that extra argument, we don't need that comma at the end. So to show that this still works, we'll go ahead and hit done. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my queries list. So here's when we first created the records that hold the nested calculations. And then here's where we expanded them. And notice all of their headings are just fine. Let's go back to the advanced editor. Now there is one potential problem of accepting the default names. And that is if you have a table that already contains one of these names, like if there was already a table called tax, then you're going to get an error because two columns can't have the same name. If you had these referenced a second time, Power Query would be smart enough to check the existing column names and say, hey, there's already one called tax, so we'll have to rename this new one to tax1 or tax2, something like that. But if you're sure you're not going to have any duplicate names and you want to accept the original names, there's no need to state this twice. Now on to my next favorite piece of code optimization, and that is when you're setting data types. Look at this step right here. We're setting cost, sales, profit, discount, subtotal, tax, and total all to the currency type. Now, if we scroll up into the M code, cost and sale were previously data typed as numbers. Sales rep was data typed as text. So really, we don't need to data type cost and sales as numbers just to turn around and change them into currency. So we could delete those because those will get data typed at a later step. So let's make sure this still works. I'll hit done. And if we scroll over, everything is still working. Let's go back to the advanced editor. So we're setting sales rep as a text data type. We could have actually waited to perform this data typing till later when we data typed everything else. So let's cancel out of this and delete that original change type step. So for the life of this query, the sales rep field will just be the any data type. But on our change type step, we can go ahead and set that to text. This M code up here is really unattractive and somewhat confusing to read. So let's go back to the advanced editor. We'll scroll down to that step. Now, when we did that, we lost our beautification. So real quick off camera, I'm gonna go put this code back into the Power Query formatter, reformat it, and then start from that point. All right, this is a little easier to read. Now to get to the point of this optimization trick when it comes to setting data types, if most of the fields you're data typing are going to be of the same data type, just data type the ones that will be different and then set a default data type for everything else. So that way, no matter what you don't define, it just becomes this default data type. So I'm going to highlight all of these fields that are of the same data type and delete them. So sales rep will be a text data type, but everything else will be a currency data type. So here's a list of data types and inside there is a single data type declaration. After that list, after those curly braces, we're going to type in a comma and then type in currency.from. This will be the default data type for all undefined fields. Now there is one catch to this. This technique of assigning the currency data type using currency.from, we can't mix that with the standard data typing technique where we just explicitly declare a data type. It has to be derived. So we're going to change this sales rep data type from type space text, and we're going to use the text.from function. So sales rep will get the text.from to get its data type and everything else will use the currency.from to get the currency data type. Let's hit done and make sure it works. Now, as we can see, it did not work properly. Now I invoke this error on purpose because I wanted to point out a trap. Understanding that sales rep will be derived from text and everything else will be derived from currency. This logic works. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with this function, table.transform column types because that's expecting standard data typing. So what we have to do is we have to use a different kind of function called table.transform columns. So we just have to change the function that we're using to assign data types. So if you're getting this error, it's because you did not change the function that's actually doing this work. Let's give that a check. 
and now everything works properly. So walking through the process, we connect to the source file, promote the header row, add all of those formulas in one shot, but those get stored in as records. We expand the records using the default column names, and then we set the data types where sales rep gets text and everything else gets currency. So if you want to cut down on the list of steps in your query and you're performing successive calculated column creation steps, like profit, discount, subtotal, tax, and total, consider wrapping all those things together into a single step that creates a list of records, and then just expand the records out. Here's our final M code. Of course, it was run through the Power Query formatter to beautify it, but it's almost half the steps of the first pass query. I don't think this is going to make your query run any faster, but for me, it helps beautify it. And I'm all about trying to make ugly code beautiful. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, and don't forget to download the sample files. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.